And for more on the school's reopening and the impact the closures have had, we are joined by Dr. Melanie Tolentino, Department Head of Social Science at the Central Luzon State University, and Katrina L., Senior Economist at Moody's Analytics. Thank you so much for joining us, both of you. Uh, Dr. Tolentino, let's start with you first. Now, the Philippines is among the last countries to reopen its schools. Were the protracted school closures worth it in terms of the country's key goals in addressing the pandemic? Good morning. We experienced so many challenges for the two-year uh, closure of our universities and primary and secondary schools. These uh, challenges actually uh, affected institutions of schools, families, as well as the uh, students. For the case of the schools, we have to adjust our curriculum to offer it in a uh, online modality. So we offered it in uh, two ways. It could uh, it uh, was online synchronous and online asynchronous, which definitely impacted the uh, uh, universities. We have to adjust our uh, content as well as our evaluation tools for the students so that we could still deliver even if this, the close, if this, even if the schools are closed. Also for the uh, professors as well as school teachers, we also experienced difficulty in terms of adjusting for, to the computer and technical skills necessary for the delivery of our online classes. We have to adjust our pedagogy as well. But uh, I believe that the, the impact is more for the students because they had difficulty to adjust to this online mode of teaching. And as you all know, Philippines, we do not have that very sophisticated uh, in, uh, information and communication technology infrastructure. Most of our students, they do not have computers, laptops, and they have difficulty to have internet connectivity. So uh, we experienced so many challenges for the families, uh, many of the families had lost uh, livelihoods, but uh, it gave opportunity for our students who are in online classes to pursue work, part-time work, to support for their needs as well as for their families. Yeah, there certainly were many challenges over the last two and a half years in the Philippines. Uh, Katrina, just broadly speaking, what has the pandemic done uh, to the economy and how has that directly impacted schools and students over the last two and a half years? So we know that the pandemic has um, deeply affected the Philippines economy. And I think what will be really interesting to see going forward will be the, the economic impact of um, the this school system being closed for such a prolonged period. Because we know that, you know, the Philippines is the uh, unfortunately um, gotten the, the tag of being the, the, the country that's endured the longest pandemic related school shutdown. And, you know, the Philippines economy is highly reliant upon its skilled labor force, not just from a domestic point of view, because, but also because um, a lot of highly skilled Filipinos that have been educated in the Philippines then seek work abroad. Um, they send remittances back to their families. It's an important driver of household consumption. So there could actually be, you know, lasting scars as a result of, of these school shutdowns because we know that, you know, literacy standards, for instance, according to data from the World Bank, um, literacy standards for those around 10 years have actually deteriorated over the past two years as a result of these pandemic-related shutdowns because there is difficulties and there is really limitations with um, trying to um, homeschool. It, it doesn't work and it's not as effective as, um, you know, being in the, the proper uh, regular kind of school environment. So, you know, I think that's going to be kind of a an interesting and unfortunate economic impact that we're going to see as a result of uh, the Philippines' handling of the pandemic with these extended school shutdowns. Mm. And Dr. Talentino, let's bring you back into the conversation. You know, some education experts think that the current learning crisis could be an opportunity to transform the education system for the better. I mean, do you think that's realistic? And what do you see as the biggest challenge going forward? We still have to do a lot of studies about the impact of this uh, change of modality. We have so many students who expressed uh, worries 
that they may, may not be getting the proper skills training necessary as they graduate uh, through this online mode learning. However, for the educational institutions, for the administrators, they have seen the opportunity that well classes can be delivered in online basis. So uh, even if the schools are opening now here in the Philippines, there are still universities who had opted to do the blended mode of learning. So there are only subjects, particularly subjects that need skills training, laboratory, so that they could have the face-to-face -face classes. But for the classes that only require lecture classes, uh, we have the option for online mode of learning. So definitely this two years experience will change the shape of education of the Philippines. But uh, it, it has a good point to really study the impact of this two years closure to the industry. Uh, there are so many students who are uh, worried that they may not get uh, uh, the job that they want and the, the companies may doubt their skills, the training that they had through this online mode of learning. Dr. Tolentino, just to stay with you, uh, we heard Katrina mentioned that the World Bank warning of a recent report that protracted school closures would worsen basic literacy standards and will likely reduce the productivity and earnings of children once they enter the workforce. Is it possible uh, to rectify this or is the government looking to sort of catch up on the years lost? Dr. Tolentino? Uh, excuse me. Uh, sorry. I did not get a question. Can you Yeah, Dr. Tolentino, I was just asking you. Uh, we heard just now from uh, Katrina talking about uh, the World Bank that recently reported about how the protracted school closures would, has worsened the basic literacy standards and the knock-on effect to that being the reduction of productivity and earnings of children once they enter the workforce. Is the government looking to rectify that or, or make up for lost time? Right now, we do not have very concrete, concrete plans to rectify these problems that caused by the closure. Specifically, uh, maybe the uh, strategies would definitely rely on educational institutions. Uh, basically, for the uh, uh, primary and secondary units, they've been trying to rectify this by uh, tutorials. Uh, at home tutorials, uh, the, the faculty members or the teachers are having double time to visit these homes to at least rectify the the lost time and the lost learning uh, opportunities for the children. As for the uh, universities, we are trying to rectify it by increasing um, more opportunities for consultation. But for, for the government, I am not aware yet of the concrete plans to rectify these issues of the closure of uh, universities in terms of training and preparation of students for the industry. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Katrina, you know, speaking of counteracting, uh, you know, learning losses, how urgent uh, is increased government investment or funding in schooling? And if government wants to target their support, where should their focus be? Yeah, that's a great question. And we know that education is such a, a critical component of an economy reaching its productive capacity because human capital accumulation is, is just critical to um, an economy thriving over the long term. And so I think, you know, in, in, the government has announced that it it is making education a priority, but it needs to direct those funds to the, to the most you know, efficient mechanism. So that's really focusing on those um, areas that are particularly underfunded, um, those more vulnerable groups that might have particularly lagged behind during the pandemic. So um, where, where homeschooling, for instance, um, didn't really take place at all. And so, um, you know, focusing on those students, whether it be the, the younger students or, or the older cohort, um, you know, those that have particularly lagged and not been able to continue with their schooling for the past two years. And that's, I think, going to be an, a, a, a very strong focus over the next couple of years. And particularly if the government wants to really make headway on reducing the, the poverty rate. So mm -hmm. they've announced that they would like to see the, um, the incidence of poverty fall down to 9%, which is an incredibly uh, low figure considering that it's sitting at over 20% at the moment. So um, if they're actually going to achieve that, they need to 
um, continue with education being a consistent priority and really continue to direct funds where they're needed most. And Dr. Tolentino, just one last question for you about lessons learned from the pandemic from the government's point of view when it comes to safeguarding the education of young Filipinos. Thank you for that question. Uh, yes, Filipino children do did have a lot of uh, learning in this two-year closure of our schools. There are positive and there are negative. You know? For uh, the students, I've seen a lot of uh, uh, students who have awakened their uh, civic spirit. You know? Even if they are not engaged in classes or in the universities, they were able to engage themselves in a lot of uh, civic and uh, social works during the pandemic. They helped their classmates to mobilize resources because during the time when there was a typhoon here and uh, there were so many students who were affected, uh, a lot of uh, student organizations mobilized to help their classmates, their neighbors, to provide for the lost livelihood. Also, uh, even if uh, we, we've lost the opportunity for this face-to-face uh, -face, uh, learning, uh, so many students had also uh, were able to help their families because uh, they work part-time during the online classes. But definitely, it is so true that uh, there are so many negative uh, impacts of this uh, closure of schools, and we try to, to uh, strategize so that we can address this uh, negative aspect, especially that the impacts of this closure is divisive, class divisive. For As you know, Philippines, we rely to good education so that we can equip ourselves with uh, good skills and training so that we can have better jobs. But for students who do not have intergenerational wealth, we are worrying that uh, they may not have the, the proper training so that they can go to industry. And that requires a lot of studies, a lot of uh, reflections, and we hope that we can help uh, in the policy and in strategizing programs so that we can really m m uh, mitigate the problems caused by these closures. Well, thank you both for speaking with us uh, this morning and sharing your insight with us. Dr. Melanie Tolentino, Department Head of Social Science at the Central Luzon State University, and Katrina L., Senior Economist at Moody's Analytics. Our time for a break now.